Hello again everybody and turning away from Homer and the travails of Odysseus I'm now moving on to late, uh, later Roman Empire poetry and the poems of Decimus Magnus Ausonius. Um, although it's not strictly a journey or indeed a travel uh, extract directly, today's poetic trifle concerns the lovely Mosul River. It's not a profound poem, it's not imbued with philosophical insight or political challenge, but it does have a charm and a calm reflectiveness, which I have to say I find rather appealing. It also slightly appeals to me, uh, not going to lie, because Edward Gibbon, that arch proponent of Rome's imperial grandeur, doesn't like Ausonius. So Decimus Magnus Ausonius lived and wrote in the 4th century AD spent some of his time in Germany, probably including Trier. Now Trier was then the regional capital uh, of Germany, it was Augusta Trevororum, and it boasted uh, architectural features such as this large black gate to the city, the Porta Nigra, and two very impressive sets of baths, uh, the Kaiser Termen and the Barbara Termen, as we see here. But we also know he spent quite a lot of time in Bordeaux, and he was a professor of rhetoric there for a, quite a long time, but he also went to Italy uh, because we know that he also served time as a consul. So he was no stranger to the cut and thrust of political life. Now this poem, or this extract from a poem, comes from a much longer poem and it's just about the Mosul River. Waterways such as the Mosul and the Rhine and the other big rivers of Europe were and are important highways but they're also places to sit and ponder and reflect. And so this extract is very much in that sort of vein for today. So I make no recommendation about it. I make no claims to its great profound insight other than it's a nice chance to relax with Ausonius on the Mosul. They say that when the sun reaches high noon and men hide themselves away from the heat, the satyrs and river nymphs meet beside the stream and dance outside the human gaze. The river nymphs love to splash the satyrs whose stroke is weak and too clumsy to catch these charming tormentors who slip away in the long waves rolling over their home. Now there's nothing wrong in my speaking of things which men have never before seen. I only wish to reveal them in part while I leave the greatest secrets hidden. There is a sight I can easily draw. The blue river reflects the shadowed hill. The stream seems to bear leaves and twisting vines. All the ridges swim on darkened ripples. The leaves and even the clusters of grapes are captured here on the clear crystal waves. The confused boatman counts out the green vines. The helmsman steers his bark in the channel of the river where the hill's image blends with water and the edges of shadow. And how nice it is to watch the oarsmen row their boats together in the middle, weaving makeshift pageants on the water. They circle in and out and build a dance which touches the sedge cro growing by the shore. The bargemen run from bow to stern like boys playing their summer games, and the farmer rests his back and gaily watches these feats of skill played on the river's flat surface. While he watches, the farmer can forget the setting sun and the care of his land. All things, river, painted boats, give these lads their, that appearance which only youth can wear. Liber, some say Bacchus, must have seen the same when he strolled the slopes of Gaurus and measured the rising Cumean tide, or watched the vineyards on Vesuvius raise their wine-rich clusters under a cloud. Or when Venus, happy for Augustus, commanded Cupid and his troop to act the battle fought by the navies of Rome and Egypt below Apollo's temple, or when the Avernus bears the acting out of the naval battle at Milai. When Hyperion unleashes the heat of the sun, the crystal surface reflects the crews as crooked and upended men. While the oarsmen force their hands back and forth, the rippling water parodies their strength. The boys take delight in these elusive images the river gives back to them. When they see this mockery, the sailors are each innocent as a growing child who has never seen a mirror and thinks the image he sees is another boy. The inexperienced infant would like to smooth reflected hair, straighten the shirt and would even kiss the polished mirror. The boys on the boats while their time away with shapes that are sometimes true often false. 
and the poem continues describing the sights and sounds of the peacefully flowing Mosul River. So I offer you that as a kind of uh, almost midsummer reflection lazing by the river with Ausonius.